In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to build a tube chassis. So we're gonna go over the process and how we got to this part that we are right now, which is a full tube chassis drag truck. It is 850 certified, and we just got some more buttoning up to do, but we're gonna go over all the cage work in today's video and how we got to this point. So the first thing we did was actually take the cab off the frame, throw that crap all away. And this truck was so rusty that we cut the rockers out and we welded in these brand new beautiful rockers right here. So we took our brand new rocker and we marked her out on where we wanted to cut this thing front and back, getting rid of all that rust on Whitey. Then we took the daunting task of drilling all the spot welds out so we could get these panels off the truck and cutting on our lines with an angle grinder. And then we took our nice air hammer and started air hammering this uh, panel off. We didn't miss a spot weld, I guess, in the back, but it was just ripping and tearing so you get all these rusty panels off so you can weld in some fancy new ones. The other thing that we did too is cut out the inner rocker because we still rotted out. Plus we welded in an eighth inch piece of metal there so we could tie our tube chassis into. We got it all primed with some yellow paint and then we got it all tacked in place. Got the door in so we get our body lines nice and straight. And we also got the driver's side done too. Got that all welded up and grinded out. Then we cut the floors out, which is the minimal amount of cutting we did. And then we started welding in some bars. We also had to cut that back panel and firewall out if you look in the future photos, but yeah, more and more bars. We also picked up a nice set of 33 by 18 and a half by 15 Hoosier slicks for this baby and TIG welded it all up. So this is actually a four nine inch out of a 1969 Mustang. Uh, we will be using it in our tube chassis drag truck right here, our Whitey build. which will be a twin turbo 5.2 liter Magnum with a four speed 46 RE. It was a four wheel drive truck and now it is a two wheel drive tube chassis truck. I have 27 gears, a full spool for the nine inch, full rebuild kit and a new actual third member housing compared to the stock one. If you guys wanna pick up any of these parts, of course, they'll always be linked down in the description below. Then we had a blast in that back bracing with an awesome yes welder, which melted it in real good. I uh, got her all lined up, built our custom four link for it, and yeah, started bending some bars. We also forgot to bend the front bar, so our affordable vendor came in luck right there, being able to bend it on the truck. Using our Dodge Caliber front suspension on this thing, uh, she really came together. So we had to sacrifice our 08 Dodge Caliber for this beautiful front suspension that you guys see right here. So we put her in the crusher, and we had to crush her. scrapping it it was not worth any money the trans was out of it so we parted it out and then we kept the parts that we needed like the rack and pinion uh the knuckles the brakes and we got some new lower control arms and some aftermarket dual adjustable uh front struts some max speeding rods front struts uh we put the link down in the description below for some max speeding rod parts too uh these ones are not dual adjustable sorry they're single adjustable but you can also have camber planes, so you can adjust your camber. So then after we got our whole front suspension in, we had to mount the engine itself. And instead of doing motor mounts on the side of the block, because the problem with that is, is when you actually floor this motor, this motor wants to twist and that pulls on the side of the block. So if you do a solid motor mount on the side of the block, it actually stresses the block out more than doing uh, motor plate setup. This actually strengthens the block because you're literally sandwiching it between these two beefy plates and it's tied into the chassis, so it's actually part of the framework and everything else, so it just makes everything more rigid. From a mechanical serpentine belt driven water pump to an electric uh, water pump. And in order to do that, well, of course, we gotta get the motor out and we're gonna have to switch from the Magnum timing cover to an LA timing cover. And then we got our electric water pump that will bolt right on. We also got some motor plates we gotta put into this guy and we're gonna put an M1 intake manifold and a cooler oil pan and pickup tube on this thing. And now that we got our Magnum timing cover out of the way and water pump, uh, you can see our beautiful dual row timing chains right there. Uh, that's for the big, large, lumpy, dumpy cam because the only reason why we are going to the LA style front cover and the electric water pump, well, electric water pump for horsepower, but I would have stood stock Magnum water pump, 
but due to our tube chassis, we have to motor plate this, and I didn't feel like making motor plates, and the only motor plate they make for a 360 is for a LA 360 and not a uh, Magnum 360 or a 318, because this is a 318, but the LA 318, LA 360s, they make a motor plate for, but the Magnum, they don't. Um, everything's pretty interchangeable, so that's why we're going over to the Magnum front timing cover, and then we're doing that. I'm not gonna buy a mechanical water pump, when we can buy an awesome electric water pump. So that's why we're doing the electric water pump upgrade. And then we got an SFI approved balancer because this truck's gonna be insanely fast. And just like that, we got the front motor plate in. We got an electric water pump in. We also got to get a uh, mechanical fuel pump uh, block off plate because we don't have a mechanical fuel pump. We got electric fuel pump because it's 2020. And then uh, we got wire in our electric water pump and what we'll, we'll wire this into is actually our fuel pump so when the fuel pump's running the water pump's running we can also wire it into a switch so if our engine's off we can turn the water pump on and the radiator fans on so it's circulating cool water through to cool it down and eight months later we have a rolling tube chassis and holy crap guys was this a ton of work but we got a roller uh we got our dodge caliber front suspension we got all our tube work done tig welded looking beautiful you know tigging 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 the whole thing uh our seats are in back walls are out so you guys see we got some buttoning up to do but gosh look at all this tube work the rear ends in everything's like finished welded put together and it's just been an awesome crazy project and sorry guys we're not taking you a little long for this <laughs> journey and what a Ben said why do you went from a four-wheel drive full stock truck to this tube chassis aftermarket aftermarket truck coilovers are expensive by the way and personally a lot of this build has been not that interesting nor fun to watch it's been a lot of tape measuring and tape measuring and drilling and welding and cutting and which is not the most fun and interesting thing in the world to watch so i didn't really want to video it and i really don't want to put a camera on. milwaukee works great as a hammer by the way if you did not know this big chunk hunk of aluminum needs to be cut down because this is our new fancy motor mount instead of having a motor mount on the side we have sandwich plates sandwiching the front of the motor to the back of the motor keeping the 318 more alive. You know, life gets busy sometimes, and it did. So, but we're back, and it's always fun to be back, especially now because I can say hi to half of you guys again. Don't forget to drain your compressors. Holy crap, we can make a freaking river out of this thing. Doesn't that look so much nicer, not as a giant aluminum hunk? Well, plus two, we can fit our headers through because, you know, we got the reverse mount long two headers for the big twin turp skis. But we got it all hooked up, baby. That's what you're talking about. It looking beautiful. Electric water pump, uh, motor plates. You can see how it's sandwiched between a motor plate that's permanently attached to the truck right here. We also have that nice cutout for our uh, crank position sensor. Uh, eventually we'll probably switch over to a crank sensor off the front of the harmonic balancer, but for now she's fine right there. And it even looks even better on the ground. Look how low this motor is, guys. Like, that's how high she is. I think we're gonna jack it up a little bit, but this is pretty close to what ride height's gonna be for this truck. I mean, it's still pretty tall for what it is. Yeah, cars slam lower than that. But our little limitations here, I think, for the rockers drag is definitely this front cross member, which is lower than the oil pan, which I did and designed on purpose. So if we ever did hit something, it hit that instead of the oil pan. Plus there'd be a big tray under there. So if the motor blows up, it doesn't puke its gut all over the track. We're back at the shop working away. It's nice Monday night and uh, we just got the steering actually tacked up and uh, working. So this is how our steering's gonna be. We are using a stock steering wheel, stock 
uh, steering shaft and everything else. We did weld uh, from the gearbox of my 98 Ram four wheel drive shaft onto my Dodge Caliber uh, rack and pinion. So that's how this is all hooked up. And then we have some bearings from Play Farm and some holders, some pill block bearings. And we have steering now. Look at that. And that's how we got to this full tube chassis drag truck that we are right now. It is again, certified, ready to go. We just have to physically phys finish it ourself. A couple things that we need to put into for safety is a window net and then a few other things. We're also going to add a couple few more bars back here that we don't miss. But our main hoop is all one in five ace ERW. This is 0.134 thickness. Our down bars, you could do a one in five ace, just single bar, but we did the X bar, so these are only one and a half inch. Again, 0.134. One five ace, one five ace. Back bars, one and five ace. And then our kicker bars, these are one and a half inch because we have six of them and one's Xing. Uh, we will put the link down in the description below for the NHRA rule book so you guys can read that up before you start trying to build a tube chassis out of your garage as well. But yeah, guys, the Whitey build is back and she is an absolutely monster. I'm excited to get this done. So we got some work to do and then we can get to driving this tube chassis drag truck.